So, Sarah, what does it feel like to be back on the Opry stage? Oh, it's always great. I felt like tonight um, I had such a hectic day, and I, you know, sort of got here like 15, 20 minutes before it was time to go on. So I felt like tonight was the most fun I've ever had at the Opry because I was just really relaxed, and um, we did three songs, which normally I think we just do two, and the op a lot of the Opry band played with us. So they added the steel guitar and the fiddle and all that. And then I did a Patsy Cline song crazy, um, which was very surreal to be right there on the, Opry to be stage, right there on the Opry stage. Yeah. Crazy. Yes. That was amazing with the Opry band. Yes. Which do you think maybe one of the more underrated bands in country music? Cause they are so great. They are great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't underrate them, but maybe other people do. I, they probably just aren't thought about that much because, right. Right. you know, they're always here. here they're always perfect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they probably are just taken for granted a little bit. But, yeah, they're amazing. Uh, earlier this year, the uh, Barker Family Band, the EP, mm -hmm. uh, a family project. Yes. And includes an amazing cover of Fleetwood Mac. Oh, thank you. Dreams. Can you talk about uh, the EP and what went into making that? So my son graduated from high school last year, and he is a guitar player and a singer-songwriter. And um, we, our guitar player left right around the time he graduated, so I asked him to come play guitar for me. And so then and my daughter, Olivia, is an incredible singer, and so I just thought, I bet the fans would love to see something a little bit different. So I called a meeting with managers and I said, I'm thinking about putting together like a small little acoustic show with me and Avery and Olivia. And then my brother on bass and my sister singing harmony. So it's like all in the family. And then we kept growing it. And then we added our other guitar player, Ben, and then we added our drummer. Um, and so it just turned out to be the coolest project. Um, we did six shows and they were all sold out. Everybody loved it. Um, and the whole show was just like some of my hits, but then mostly cover tunes. And so Fleetwood Mac was one of the cover tunes that we chose. And then we put that on the EP. And we're, we're going to release the live show that we did here in Nashville. Oh, wow. Um, I think on That's August great. 8th, August 30th. But this is the first time you've had the family involved with the music projects. Words had a lot of family input too, right? Um, did words have family input? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, so my sisters have always sang on my records, right. um, and toured with me and, and like, of course my brother is my band leader and my bass player and he sang on words too, but he, um, has always sang on my records. Like he's doing almost all the harmony stuff on real fine place to start. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's always been a family affair and we grew up playing in the Evans family band right? with me being the lead singer and then my brother's backing me. Um, and you're working on a new solo album now. Mm -hmm. Can you talk any about that? I mean, I don't think I can say exactly. It's going to be very different from anything else I've ever done. Um, and I just chose the producer and I'm super, I mean, I'm over the moon excited about this producer. Um, we're going to go in the studio in October and I can't, wait to see what happens you know it's like I try to kind of have a picture in my mind of what I think you know this next album is going to be this and then you go in the studio and you just don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen how often does like the magic happen while you're in the studio like, all when, the time yeah where you think every oh, song I had no idea this was going to happen but this is so much better than what I had in my head every song oh wow you know the yeah. musicians are just so amazing and I'm I have so much respect for them and I'm so in awe of what they do just by listening to the song that I've written or, you know, the chart that I've given them. And then they just, you know, they help produce the record themselves by the parts that they come up with. Um, but I, I feel like it's magical every time I'm just like, Oh my gosh, you, this is amazing. Um, but I love being in the studio and I think this next project, because it is, my plan is for it to be really different and really specific. I think um, could be harder. Right. But, you know. Um, what does your career feel like so far? I mean, you know, the fans, awards, record sales, but 
like when you sit at home and you think about your career, what does that feel like? Well, it, it always feels like I'm, I'm trying to do more and accomplish more and obviously stay relevant. Um, you know, I do feel like I've, I'm to a place where I have an amazing fan base and, um, have a lot of respect from the industry, you know? Um, but I, I want to just keep getting better and better and better and honing my craft and being a better songwriter, a better entertainer. I'm a lot more comfortable all the time on stage. I just feel like, you know, but I'm, I'm always thinking about what can I do next? Um, what kind of music can I make next and how can I impress everybody? And I want to sort of be ageless, you know, sort of like Serena Williams in tennis. Like, how does she just keep doing it? Like, that's what my goal is to keep singing great and making great music. That's interesting. You say always like pushing yourself and learning. Cause I feel like sometimes musicians and recording artists, like they experience success and you can tell that they get to a certain level and they don't go further than that. Yeah. And the fact that you say that one of the things you want to do is to continue to push yourself and learn. Yeah. That's very fascinating. And good advice, I think. Well, yeah. And I think it's partly like, it just depends on how you were raised and your personality and your work ethic. Like I grew up on a farm and I'm a really, really hard worker and you know, I could never just like quit right. and, and stop working. Um, I mean, I can definitely take, long vacations <laughs> <laughs> that's um, nice yeah but with today's country music climate it's also much harder for women we have to work you know 10 times harder mm -hmm. than men just to be just to compete well to that the all the love tour that you were on you had um, ray lynn and kaylee shore mm -hmm. and so do you try to instill and, in, you know, to acts like that, that are, that are kind of coming up and at the very beginning that, you know, if you're a woman in country music, your road is different in this way for you. I mean, they know that already. Um, just from the short period of time that they've been doing it. Cause it's, it's, it's way more than it was when I started. I mean, when I started, they were playing women still, I mean, you know, I made my entire career on having hits on country radio. And then one day, you know, I don't know, I don't know what happened, but they just stopped playing women. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's always been harder for women in the music industry in general, if you're touring, um, because we're the ones that like, if we want to have a family, we're the ones that have the babies and have to either make the choice to leave them at home or take them with you. Where if you're a male artist, you know, your wife can stay home with the baby and you can go out and tour. I, I always said that I would tour 300 days a year um, if I could. But I also had to be a perfectionist at raising my children and being a mom. and you know, so, so much. So, so much, much that people don't think about. It's overwhelming. I mean, yeah. I've had years that I just thought I'm not, I can't continue to do this. It's too hard. It's too much. And just the you know, getting, people don't remember just getting down to the pressure of, and after everything else, I'm still the one that has to go put on the show and do that performance, you know? And so it's just like, everything's on your shoulders, the child rearing, you know, the planning, I mean, like all of that. But, um, so it makes me really proud though, to see what I've accomplished and that I'm still, strong in the game even though they don't play women at all i would never advise my daughter at this point to go into country just because wow. i want her to have a chance to be right. heard you know yeah but hopefully that'll change i feel like maybe we're making at, at this point in history it does feel like that maybe we're making some headway in that I don't, a little I more mean, equal representation I don't see Otherwise, that at all. Maybe I'm just saying what I hope. Well, I happening. listen to the radio or I look at the charts and it's like four women in the top 60. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and if you drive an hour down the highway and you're listening to the radio, you will only hear men. Do and you, it's just crazy. Do you think radio programmers and because clearly I don't think the fans feel that way. I think the fans want more representation. Every time I post about it, um, 
I get different reactions. Like on Facebook is one thing and Instagram is one thing. I feel like everybody on Instagram responds um, positively and kindly to me. And they, you know, but then on Facebook, um, sometimes I've gotten a lot of backlash and people say, um, it's just that the men are, you know, better. There are more men or it's just that the women, there's not as many women. And I'm like, no, there are just as many women trying to get that slot on country radio, you know? So it's just bizarre. If you think about it, like what if Hollywood just stopped casting women? So every movie we saw was just men, men, that's it. Men talking, you know, I mean, and there were no moms or wives or any, or daughters in movies or television. It's just really, really bizarre. It is bizarre, but I think we need to keep talking about it and change it. Yeah. I I'm trying. I think we can change it. Um, because I know like even in programming WSM, I mean, it's something that I think about every day when I'm putting the music together, mm -hmm. I look and I see yeah. not that I'm saying, Oh, we are so great and nobody else is doing it. But well, I think we start, we radio programmers have to start doing that. Yeah. There has to be at least one label or one radio programmer that breaks out and says, you know, it's not all just about the almighty dollar. Mm -hmm. It's, it's about, uh, we're human beings and we need that human element to, <clears throat> our songs yeah right now we don't have that human element to it it's just girl you know <laughs> hey <Truck>. girl you <laughs> know and there's so many amazing songs out there and that we used to have the honor and privilege of hearing and listening to and i can't wait until we have more amazing songs from you hopefully later this year thank you that we can play on our station thank you because you've always been such a great fan and friend of wsm and mm -hmm. thanks for coming by and hanging thank with you us. for having me this is fun let's go listen to our up next it's me and little andy by <laughs> <Dolly Parton. laughs>